Welcome to OneRoadBytes.com. This is the next video in the WAUTH 2.0 OpenID Connect series. In the last two videos, we have seen about the uh, service discovery endpoints, connect to ID server, uh, and how do we can register the client uh, dynamically, uh, public and confidential client registrations. From this video onwards, we can see about the actual OAuth flow. Flow, how do we can get the access token from the authorization server to access the protected resource? So this video, uh, we will see about the authorization code grant. Uh, this this is the most most important and widely used to OAuth flow especially used in the web applications where they have a capability of storing the uh, information securely. So uh, I'll explain with a uh, small diagram which I picked up from the RFC. So here this if you don't understand the terminologies please uh, see the video one of the series where we where I have explained about the uh, concepts and terminologies of the uh, OAuth, OAuth and OpenID spec. So here the resource owner uh, from uh, resource owner a resource owner is a user uh, using uh, and the user agent is usually a browser so basically first the you from through the browser the user a resource owner uses the authorization server as a re first request for uh, the you from the through user agent uh, will um, client will contact the authorization server with uh, some uh, client identifier that is client identifier is is the OAuth client ID and the redirection URI uh, basically, uh, basically this flow is called a three-legged flow. So, like the first time when you are sending the client identifier and redirect URI, uh, it, uh, it 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 uh, it authenticates the user and asks for the consent from the user. Once the user provides the consent, it has to return back the authorization code. Uh, so, basically, this redirection URI is a callback from the authorization server to the user agent, uh, where you can. Um, uh, where it can provide the authorization code. Uh, once the authorization code is received, uh, once this authorization code is received, the client again will send that authorization code and uh, again one more redirection URI. That is the redirection URI where uh, authorization server give back the uh, give the access token and optional refresh token. So basically, this uh, authorization server validate the authorization code, and once it is everything is uh, uh, perfect. Then this authorization code, uh, authorization server will return back with the access token and the redirection URI which is specified in this request. Okay, uh, so this flow is mostly used in the third party web applications. I'll show the client which I registered in the connect to ID server. This is the client I have registered. So if you see here, uh, like uh, I have registered for the various flows, uh, we, we are interested only in the authorization code. This is the authorization code flow and uh, and the redirection URI. Uh, basically, this is my redirection URI for the RC code, and this is for implicit. We will see about when when we talk about implicit flow. So this is my redirect URI. Uh, basically, authorization server give a callback. We will see in in in, uh, in an, uh, demo. And the auth method which I'm using is client secret post. Uh, and this is my client ID and secret uh, that means like this has to be saved securely in the backend server uh, uh, so that it will be to authenticate the client um, uh, to authenticate the client so that the authorization server to authenticate the client and the response types response types here is or uh, it, it is code because for authorization code and ID token we required and the token token can is an access token okay so this is about the client which uh, which we registered for the to perform this authorization code flow now we will see the demo uh, then after that we will go through the go to the code walkthrough so this is the like a sample web web app which i developed by me to explain the concepts in the authorization for flow, flow we have hit the uh, c2id login and c2id token uh, so those urls which we picked up from the service uh, service discovery endpoint uh, that is like you can see like what is the authorization endpoint that uh, is c2id login which client has to hit and the token endpoint to get the access token that is c2id slash token these information are picked up from the uh, service discovery information first is in our case like it's an authorization code flow so i'm going to click this authorization code this is the page where the actual authorization code flow starts. So here uh, we have to click the sign in URL. So if you see that the sign in URL is equal to this one. So I'm going to click this uh, uh, like host name, port number, C2ID login and the state. 
uh, what is the redirect URI here uh, this is what I explained uh, this it has to come to RG code redirector and my response type should be code and what is the scope I want to use like open ID email profile and this is my client ID okay so uh, this is the uh, this is the URL which I built uh, so when a client uh, when a user clicks this sign in okay it will go to the uh, connect to ID server where it will first authenticate the user yeah it asked for the user's authentication so here if you see here like I'm going to enter the username and password only in the authorization server not in not in my client so after that I'm logging in so once it's logged in then it'll ask for the consents uh, now, now the user authentication is completed user has to pro pro provide his, provide his consent for the client to access these clients uh, this uh, open id email profile is already consent provided the consent so i'm going to add a website and the email so these are the two uh, claims extra claims i'm going to provide so it's up to up to the user to provide the consent what are the claims that client can has to access uh, client can access it so i'm authorizing the client now yeah now the client has authorized uh, and and we got a call back actually basically uh, uh, there are two calls has done in this page itself I'll explain you code, here uh, authorization code and the state once the uh, user the authorizes the, the client the authorization the earlier server will, URL, uh, you can will do the callback to the this uh, redirect so URL which is to specified for, in the uh, client the uh, you see like this, the, this is the URL which we specified in our um, uh, once oh, we receive in, uh, our uh, once, once the client, client received the code uh, they can uh, do a one more call to the uh, this uh, one more call to the authorization code this is actually a post call uh, because like we are sending the uh, client secret and the code this has to be sent securely to a uh, URL called a token uh, like to get the access token this time uh, Th this time we have, uh, the client has to make a post call so for the uh, payload for the post call is like uh, uh, it's a type is an authorization code and the code which they got it from the earlier uh, request and the client ID that is like OAuth client ID and the client secret uh, this this we would have got it from our uh, OAuth client I'll show it now so you see here this is the client ID so which we have to pass it that means like to authorize this uh, client uh, for the authorization server and the redirect URI this time uh, I'm using the same redirect URI so it's up to you you can use this different redirect URI also as a response for this uh, uh, like authorization server first verify this code and the secret it's everything is f per perfect then as a response for this call it will provide an uh, access token refresh token and the id token actually i, I just pasted for our uh, convenience uh, convenient this is the access token and the refresh token id token and the token type will be bearer and how much time it expires so once this access token is expired we have to use this refresh token to get the access uh, to renew the access token that we will see in the later uh, later videos like how do we can uh, do uh, uh, do once access token is expired uh, here this access token and ID token or JOT token I have decoded the token if you see here uh, if you see here this access token is decoded and it's a subject is uh, 100 bytes user and we have provided the scope for open ID email and profile so who is the issuer uh, and when it is ex when it is, will be expired what uh, where uh, at what time it is issued a lot of information will be provided here actually ID token basically will have the more information about the user inform user so like if you for example if you try with the Google server you will get a like a, a profile link URL email ID or uh, like a nickname uh, it's a lot of information will be provided in the ID token it's up to the user what are the claims which provided the consent this also uh, id token is also a yeah, jot token so this also has the uh, who's issuer when it is expired when it will be issued at so this is the demonstration of the authorization code flow uh, we will see about the uh, code walkthrough of for this flow i'll explain the source code uh, i'll explain the code walkthrough from the uh, bit by gate source uh, uh, 100bits.com uh, code repository so in a 100 by uh, OAuth demo uh, there's something called the public folder basically this HTML files which we see uh, which we see or are, are present in this uh, 
uh, what do you call it uh, in in this folder uh, you can have this uh, index.html uh, redirector everything is present here so you, uh, just uh, have a look uh, how do, how it is defined and the next is the actual source code so here source code before uh, i'll go to the resource folder first here in the resource folder um, in the resource folder this main gate dot java is the one which which will which is the initial part uh, which which is the starting point as i explained in the earlier uh, videos like uh, i'm using a grizzly server for this uh, if you don't want to use the grizzly server you can just ignore this uh, resource folder and take up only the auth flows folder and use it with your uh, server so here this main gate uh, this main gate the java like these are all the server related configurations this up to uh, like line number 58 and um, i'm basically i'm i'm mounting like each each flow in a single in, in one of the url so here rc code flow is mounted in the rc code and it has a redirector rc code redirector similarly for the other flows which we'll see it in the later part when i start the server this index index file will be served uh, and after that if i click this authorization code it will go to the rc code which is uh, which is actually mounted here you can see here rc code for the rc code flow and for the redirector it will be rc code redirector basically uh, for this rc code this rc code flow class will be served similarly for rc code redirector this rc code flow redirector will be served so uh, now we will see about this uh, what uh, 2.0 that is like util class where all the <clears throat> information about uh, this client and the client secret will be stored uh, so when you are using your own favorite OAuth server you can edit this file uh, to have your um, what's the username and password uh, so this is our client id which, which you have seen in our sign in url and the secret whatever it is <clears throat> the, from here from this util class only it's everything we picked so it has this uh, this this class has lot of utility methods like uh, one is like uh, how, like to pass the jar token and get the jar get the signed jar this is for this is the actual building the html page uh, uh, nice html page where we can see the access token id token everything will be built they are using this utility class okay okay now coming to the uh, actual rg code flow so this is uh, this is uh, when when you click the rc co authorization code from the index html uh, this part of the uh, this class will be executed so here um, i will explain only the one which is required for the rc code uh, flow uh, other things and all i'll ignore it first actually you have to build a sign in url so you uh, the you, you see here a sign in url i'm putting the state i'm just put it hard coded the state uh, and what is my redirect url that is actually you have to pass it to the redirect URI parameter and the response type what is the response type and what are the scope what is the client so these this client id scope and all will define in the oauth2 dot oauth2o util classes once the sign in url is built uh, it will be shown uh, it will shown in that html place so when the user clicks it will give a callback as i explained earlier it will call back to the rc code flow redirector so that will be this is the class rc code flow redirector once the callback received uh, we have to build a payload to make a post call to the token so here uh, this is my redirect URI. i'm using the same redirect URI, rc code redirector and the grant type is authorization code and the code is like a, this is with this you can see like i'm getting it from the request uh, the parameter will be code this we have to uh, pass which we got it from the previous response client id this is the time where you have to provide your client secret not in the earlier time actually not in the first uh, not in the first request and the redirect way uh, so this we this i built and i pass it uh, uh, make a post call using the jersey api you, you, you can see like i'm making a post call so i'll got the response and the response will be uh, parsed with my utility class i'll get the uh, access token and id token and this uh, this this code is just for passing the i mean like this code is just to present it in the html file so this is the way you need to get the access token and id token
so i'll repeat first will be rc code will be called where you where you will have to build a sign in url with the redirect uri or uh, client id and the scope uh, once the user click this sign in url uh, authorization server will um, do authenticate the user and ask the user to provide the consent once the consent is provided uh, authorization code server will give a call back to the rc code flow redirector uh, then now uh, then the client has to build a payload to hit the token uh, endpoint uh, to get the access token using the code which they which they received from the previous response uh, at this time you will get access token and id token along with the refresh token that's it about the authorization code flow uh, we will see about implicit code flow in the next video thanks for watching this